quarantine's really doing a number on me, huh? Watch this. Nothing's changed, but now I have a hat, so let's get on with the video. Welcome back to my Dresden review. Uh, this one's way late because this one took me longer to read. Why? Because I feel like I'm getting tired of the Dresden books three books in, so I don't know what I'm doing. But let's see if I can still make it to the end. I'm not sure I can make it by Peace Talks, but by Battlegrounds, let's see what I can do. Anyway, this book, Grave Peril, uh, has the worst name by far. This one has no sense at all, so... I don't know, but at the same time, the beginning was way, way better. So I, when we walked into this book, it was a, probably the best end of the beginning we had so far. I've already read the beginning of the next book, and that's even better. So I can see that this is kind of where he's improving in the tightness and the excitement of the entire plot. But the beginning of the book was just a lot of fun. We got introduced to a new character, Michael, who was just a fantastic, fun character who I've just really enjoyed the presence of. I feel like he's a very good uh, part of the story that really counteracts against Harry's, uh, you know, nihilistic behavior. I think that it's a really, really interesting way of kind of spicing it up and bringing another relationship into the mix. I'm very much enjoying this and I think that that is the best part of this book completely. People say Grave Perils is where the stuff begins, but I don't really agree with that. This is a better book than any of the previous books, but at the same time it doesn't bring anything grand to the table. Um, it do really doesn't do much that it's only been three books and therefore about three years since we began the series uh, through Harry's eyes. And so there's not much that has gone on. And that's really unfortunate because that seems like the part of the story that would really shine through. The fact that all of these stories take place over a wide time and then we get to really experience the change of a character over this. But at the same time, in this small time, I would have expected there to be more change than this. There hasn't been very much change, uh, except for the end of this book, which is just fantastic, I think. It's, it's a great uh, way to change up the entire landscape of the story without really making it feel unrealistic. It's a very realistic, dramatic shift in the tone of the story. So the beginning was great. That entire storyline turned into something that is a mystery, uh, but this mystery was very confusing. I, I'm not a big fan of the actual conclusion and the uh, overall complexity of the mystery because it just feels like something that I couldn't understand. A mystery should be something where if you finally figure out what the answer is, you should be like, oh, and I've never done that so far in a Dresden book because the mysteries are just so complex and just so uh, not, not, I don't know if it's not good enough to foreshadow it, it's like the right thing to say, but it's not, the foreshadowing might be there, it's just that it doesn't feel like a complete story. It doesn't feel like I could have figured it out right from the start. It feels like there's so many puzzle pieces that you just need all of them to come together and you need a sort of a full understanding of, of the intentions of all the characters and there's some stuff that I, I just I'm surprised that this is the mystery and it isn't something tighter, something more approachable, something that audiences could really consider and really figure out on their own. And I think that's the biggest flaw with Dresden so far. As a mystery, it really suffers. It's not a very good mystery. As an action, it does well, but the mystery aspect of it is not very good. What I talked about in the last book was that the, be the middle of the book uh, of uh, what he called Full Moon was a, a really intense climactic battle and I very much enjoyed that because it was a very, uh, very obvious streamlined story about just this fight and I very much enjoyed that. And a similar thing happened here, except in this book, there was actually three different points where I really thought they were uh, climaxes. I couldn't figure out, you know, do we have enough space for another climax? And it always turns out that we did. And many points, I could think of it as a climax. And it's in really interesting in that way, because I think it's even better. I think there's three different places, and two of them can be considered sub-climaxes. Even now, I'm kind of debating which one is the main climax. But all of these three climaxes, happening from about a third of the way to the story to the end, all feel really big, all feel really fun and big and interesting. And it's just such a fun experience to have that, to see, to kind of have that excitement just constantly going through. And that's the kind of Dresden, uh, you know, Dresden story that I really, really connect with. The ending was the most epic of, end of any of the endings, and I very much enjoyed that. I can't go into too much more because it is a spoiler, but it does come together in a reasonable way, and the way that it comes together, the visuals of it, is just very interesting. And I thought that that was uh, very much fun. At the same time, Talking in that same way, the visuals in terms of the prose is still lacking some. It still feels like a very amateurish writer that's going through these strokes. One of the main things that I've noticed again is that he talks as if the, the mental dialogue or the mental narrative talks for way too long when there should be action happening. I've noticed that less than in Full Moon, so it is definitely an improvement, but overall it does still very much hinder my experience. It does feel like he's talking too much in his head in a very dire moment where we should be seeing the motivations and his thoughts through the fight. I feel like it's very much uh, misguided in that kind of style. So I don't know. That's pretty much my review. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would rate this book two out of five. Once again, all of them have been two out of five. Maybe I'll change the first one to a one out of five. I'm not sure. Right now, it's still okay to me. It's, it's a solid, good Dresden book and they're all like that and I, I can't really see myself enjoying it yet. But the next book already, uh, if it continues at the way that I'm already seeing it, 
it will be a three out of five stars. It looking, it's looking like this is where the series really goes up and turns for the better. So uh, that's pretty much all it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. And if you enjoyed my channel, if you enjoyed my reviews, subscribe for another Dresden video at the future and some point. I have many videos ready to come out. All fantasy. Take a look at my channel if you want to see that. And if you want to leave a comment, I would very much enjoy that. I would love to hear your thoughts on this Dresden book and previous Dresden books as well. And just off overall, talk to me about Dresden. I'd very much enjoy that. So that's pretty much it. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.